summer sign up and I guess we're gonna have some good weather here it was a monumental sign up uh, not only did it last forever but get the opportunity to really hang out with some fine uh, operators on this sign up and I'm gonna miss all of them and one of the ones I'm gonna miss the most is Sunset Bob who is going to a uh, 36, 37, straight. So I won't be seeing him in the garage anymore, and that's a big loss, of course. One of the more uplifting characters for me, anyway. And then we're gonna lose Ross, it looks like, which is another shame. Because he's able, he sees all kinds of stuff around here that I don't, I, I miss. So those are two. And then, of course, the uh, tri first female TriMet Grandmaster. I won't be seeing her much anymore. Too bad. So, yeah, it's a it's sad uh, end of the sign-up, but we still got four days left of it, at least. Yeah, the other news is uh, Chris Alexander, who apparently is under the gun today for letting letting us know that one of our fellow, uh, one of our sister operators had passed over the weekend. And I, I, I don't... That one I don't get at all. For those of you who remember the Phyllis incident over here at Merlo, where Phyllis told an operator about a situation with another operator that then got back to the operator that was involved in the incident, and she ended up getting fired over that because she wasn't supposed to talk about the incident. Um, well, she was bound by a confidentiality agreement, and I guess. I mean, and she also had uh, Mr. Booker here at the time. Well, he's not here anymore. Let's leave it at that. Uh, so I'm not sure how uh, Mr. Alexander falls into this. I know that uh, operator, we're not bound by any confidentiality agreements. We don't know anything confidential. What do we know? We just drive our routes, we have our paddles, and we do what we're told. You know, we don't have no access to confidential information. So I'm not sure where they're coming from on this with him, because this, I don't know, I don't get it, I don't see it, but all of us that are involved in the internet and have postings and uh, information, you know, we get our best news, we get our best TriMet news from each other, of course, you know, because TriMet doesn't give us any. Do they? And the newspapers only print what they want to print. Somehow they be, are able to uh, keep a lot of stuff quashed that you would think would get in a newspaper, but it doesn't. So we're the, we're the best source for news right now, you know. And as the internet's growing, people are starting to get involved. With it. Most operators have no idea how to use computers. Don't sign on the internet once in a while, maybe. But they don't know about my blog or Trimet Operator's blog or Dan Christensen. You know, it's obscure. It's still obscure in the public. But the people that are involved in it are some of the most informed people about all of the issues that they're following on blogs. Because blogs have become the new source of information for particular topics. That's, that's how topics that are not covered by mainstream media are covered. It's by people like myself and people that participate in my blog and TriMet Operators blog. It's how we know what's going on in the world of transit around us because there's no other news and <laughs> nobody covers this stuff. We're on our own to cover it and that's the way it is here. Here's Sunset Bob, what do you, how, how do you feel about your last week? Last week is starting to hit home. Most of the customers are trying to figure out if they could take the bus and then realizing how difficult it is for them. Yeah. According to uh, Chad, there was none of those houses were near the new route. They have to get new customers. Yeah, right. You see a bus run through their front yard all the time. Yeah. By their house, and they may, you know, pick up a few new ones. Most of them have dropped off. Yeah. But, uh, we just got some thank you cards from Pete. I, you know, I'm kind of surprised about it. Oh, I think really? they really should thank us for such premier service, but we're thanking them. Thanking who? Dear oh. Mill shuttles. 
customers. I want to say thank you. At the end of all. the shuttle service draws near, <laughs> we're here to begin our first regular fixed route in the Cedar Mill area. I want to take this opportunity to thank you all for your patience and kindness you've shown my operators and for your continued participation in the shuttle program. We had more than 1,200 riders register for the service in the past six years, and there's still five of us original customers who are riding with us. Five original? Yeah. For us, the service has been special because we actually get to know your name and something about our customers. This is a big advantage in the service industry. That's true. And it makes it possible for us to personally wish you continued success and the best of health in the future. Thank you sincerely, Kate Taylor, Merle Garage, Jean, Barbara, Rose, John, and uh, where's Bob? Uh, it's just Bob. It should be Is Sunset Bob. Bob that's but, you? you know, we'll yeah. some of the regular done the six years. Yeah. You know, most of the customers are just whining. Well, I don't know if that's going to help their, how they feel about it. I guess yeah. I guess the idea is to kind of like make them not Transition. so angry or something. Transition, yeah. you know. And yeah. maybe, they'll get, maybe they'll get used to the fixed route. That's just it. This is a fixed route card. Yeah, that could be it. Yeah. They should have one free week, you know, to get used to the bus. <laughs> that, that's an idea. They, they have money, so they wouldn't mean nothing to them. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, yeah. Yeah, most of the customers are thanking us. They're saying, oh, I wish yeah. you wouldn't go away. We're thanking them. Well, we can thank each other. Today we get track 20 all the way at the end of the parking lot. Just they want us to get exercise. This is a nice day. There's the two shuttles. Hi. I was shooting the shuttles. The shuttle's about to be history there. The shuttles? Those shuttles over there are about to be history. Those shuttles. I can't hear you. The shuttles are about to be history over there. Really? Yeah. I wonder what they're gonna do with them. Yeah. What about Rick? Oh, they'll go to routes now. Really? I, I don't know what route he took. Wait, did they, with, was, does that come under the budget cuts or something? Yeah, they eliminated the Cedar Mill shuttle. Were they basically like a taxi? Yeah, they were like an airport shuttle. Get rid shuttle. of that. It, used to, it was like an airport shuttle. Yeah. Door, you know, pick them up at the door and then take them. Yeah, well. Yeah, well, I guess, you know. Yeah, I think Bob's been on like five years. Rick comes off and off, off and on. See you later. And there she is, 1833. Alright, be back. Ah, it's good to be back, huh? A three day weekend. I tell you, you get a little off kilter when you have days off. Somehow it, it like screws up your rhythm. But it's, it's really great, but then you got to come back, you see. Still no new schedules in there for the people. Look at that ad. These people don't like that. They don't want to watch that. They don't want to see new service when they're losing service. All right, let's see what we got here. in as far as possible, in. <laughs> 